What's going on, everybody? It is your main man, Big Ivan, talking to town, Mr. DETVCH.com, Mr. Positivity. And you know what it is. It's Meet the Candidate. And in this episode of Meet the Candidate, I definitely want to give a special shout out, a special thank you to the millspace.com. Make sure you check them out. If you need a co working space or just an area to just clear your mind and get some work done, make sure you check them out, millspace.com in Wilmington. So today's episode on Meet the Can, I have someone special, someone that doesn't just show up, but they are there to speak life, help out, care about education, just care, just, a, a, I think if I have to put in the lower thirds, good dude, like that's it, just good dude, that just happens to be a councilman, a district one, right, and running for state representative. Brother Namdi, what's going on, bro? Sorry, brother Ivan. Yes, sir. How's Glad everything, to be here, bro? Everything's well. Man, Indeed. thanks for coming out. Thanks and, uh, for giving me time and space. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Indeed. So, tell me, who's Namdi? And Namdi, uh, a Namdi is, you know, as you said, one half uh, of the twin poets, but I'm also a, a lifelong social worker. Mm -hmm. And many who know that my father was William Hicks Anderson. So when my father passed away in 1990, I changed my name to Anamdi. And Anamdi means that my father's inside of me. It's an oh, wow. Igbo name from, from the Nigerian culture. And nice. it's really, um, you know, just a testament, just a testament of my, my father's legacy and what we've started as my brother and I'm trying to live up to his legacy. They say that the, the son of an elephant can, cannot be a dwarf. So you know, when you follow in your father's footsteps, you learn to walk like him. So, right. I've, I've tried to do what my, I see my father do and just to uphold that and, and realize what he did for our community was, was, was not only be a voice for those who didn't have a voice, but he was a true leader. He was a, a man of the people every single day and, and that's, that's all I know how to be. I mean, I worked in the community, my brother and I. At 12 years old, we were in the Walnut Street YMCA and mm -hmm. thankfully at 13 years old, Mr. Jack Booker gave us a, uh, our, our first summer jobs at 13 and camp mm -hmm. counselors right there. And, still don't believe to this day that they was paying us to do that. And, and it, it was so beautiful. And that's that same optimism and just joy for, for empowering our children and working with families that I've had my, my entire career. So yes. Brother Nam is a, just a dedicated community servant. I, I, I love the city of Wilmington. Uh, there's not a place on earth I, I would rather live. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to see my, my city improve. I want us to do better. And I'm running for state representative because I realize that as a city, being a member of city council, you, you can only go so far. We really need state assistance to address many of the challenges that are facing our city. Now, how big is state representative? How, how big is that for us? Like, being an African American, you know, we see that a lot of things go down down Dover, and a lot of people down Dover really don't care. You know, are, are you that guy that can create change down there for us? I, I think so. I mean, my, my whole stance is have I mean, my six years on, on city council, I've tried to be one of, of just being who I am. I haven't, you know, it's not about changing who you are. It, I, I take who I am everywhere, whether it's my poetry, whether it's my community-based social work, mm -hmm. it's me being in a courtroom with a client or in the school for expulsion hearings. I, I am who I am everywhere I am. If you right. love me today, you're going to love me tomorrow. I don't flip-flop. I'm grounded in my issues, what, what I believe, and I believe having that same conviction down Dover and the same love for Wilmington because Wilmington is just not being given a fair shake. We, right. we, we just aren't. So many things are, are against us and we, we're, we're being left to our own accord and basically left to our own demise because yeah. we really need state state assistance and to address many of the, the tough issues that we're facing. Yeah. One of the issues that we're facing right now is education. It's a big, big thing. Absolutely. And, and recently I heard that they're about to close um, a couple schools in the, in the inner city and move some students so what is the buyer that that's one a, a proposal i mean it, it's still you know kind of in the works but mm -hmm. that that is a proposal as far as you know i guess the latest reiteration or iteration of of, of education and, and trying to have educational improvements and plans in place mm -hmm. where every so often we go through one of these plans and, and phases <laughs> and often the, the bottom line is that very little change you yeah. know is produced educational outcomes for our children are, are still horrible you know yeah. between 1974 and 1978 when, when the state took away our, our city school district our city of Wilmington school district mm -hmm. you know for those like me who I, I was in kindergarten first and second grade I was in the Wilmington school district and it was beautiful. It was a sense of, of purpose. We attended the Martin Luther King School, which is now Eastside Charter School. Yeah. And it, it was just a beautiful sense of community. And I, I will never forget going down to 
third grade, being, being bused all the way down to, to, to Newark, down to Kirkwood Highway, to Heritage Elementary School, and how that made us feel getting off that bus. We, we felt unwelcome from the first day to the last day of school, yeah. and it has never changed. The children still have that same sense of, of not belonging, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's, it's, it's horrible what's happened to, to our, our school districts. Our, our school system in, in Wilmington and what they're producing. Our, our General Assembly, again, they're the one who created this four district model, which has failed miserably. Yeah. So it's, it's really up to the General Assembly to change it. The General Assembly are also the authors of the Neighborhood Schools Act yeah. in 2000. And that basically says that children go to the schools that are closest to them. Right. That's great if I live in certain areas, you know, Hokeston, or I live in, you know, I get to go to the brand new North Star School. Yeah. But it's it's horrible in certain areas of, of our city because mm -hmm. it creates high concentrations of, of poverty and high needs in schools where teachers don't want to teach, where you know we end up with single digit proficiency rates in in, in math and in, in reading yeah. in many of our schools. So it's it's impossible for us to grow as a society with without fixing education. So right. that's. That's a fundamental issue to me, and we think about the, the crime and all the other issues in, in Wilmington. Until we can address education, we can't do anything about the crime because as long as the children are, are, I won't even say dropped out, you know, longer they're being failed by the school system, they end up on the streets yeah. where, where these drugs and guns are, end up killing themselves. So mm -hmm. it's all a part of it. Businesses don't come to our city because we can't produce a, a, a workforce for them because we don't have the, the students who are growing and, and matriculating and their own growth and development in order to, to be the employees of, of tomorrow mm -hmm. for these businesses. So why would they relocate here? Yeah. So education is, is is critical to, to our growth and development for us to be able to, to show our children that there is hope, you know, so yeah. we can stop sending so many young black males and, and Hispanic males to, to our prisons and let's, let's send more of them to college. Yeah. But that takes an investment. It takes a, a true commitment, not just on our city's part, but also on, on our state level. Yeah. So, so and, that, and that brings us to the prison, you know, was it the prison uh, um, school to pipeline? Absolutely. Um, school to prison pipeline. Um, and it all starts with education. No question. Um, what, what, when was it, how old were you or when was it that you just, the light bulb went off with you about this whole education um, um, thing in, in Delaware and in our, in our, in our community, in our urban communities where we need help? That you're like, you know what, I'm the man, I'm going to stay in there, I'm going to run for city council. This is what I'm going to do. In, in spite of your dad, who he was, but when was it that you was like, you know what, this is, this is I, I have to make the change. It, it, I mean, this has been my whole life, you know, I mean, honestly, you know, my brother and I, I mean, we, we were teenagers ourselves. Our grandmother ran a foster home at 26 and Madison Street. And we children were always in and out of our lives, you know, come in, maybe there for a day, there for a week. Some of them are still family members, extended family members to us today. Mm -hmm. But they would come in and they would have various needs, whether it, it was clothing, it was this or that. You know, my grandmother used to just just model for us what would should happen and, right. and we just followed that lead so i come from a family of social workers this is what we did we would get toys on christmas mm -hmm. and new kids would come to our house on the first day of kwanzaa and, and yeah. we would give our toys away that's how we were raised yeah. and, uh, using our talents that we had and, and working with, with with students as far as their academic needs we created a program called goals we probably were, were in maybe middle or high school a tutoring <laughs> program just for the kids on our block so wow. the kids who we, we realized that you know we didn't have this we didn't have that but what we had me and my brother were always good students. We always loved helping kids. This this is our life. So we started this back then, you know, right. and it's documented, you know, things that, that we've done in our community, working with our civic associations, have always been involved. So being being this is just who we are. You yeah, know, this yeah, is who right. we are. We went off to the um the military. Okay. Both of us served, my brother served um directly in, in the first Iraqi war. Wow. And came home from the military, started working at uh, Kingswood Community Center, rose through the ranks from youth services all the way up to being the associate director there. And See, brother, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that you guys are, you guys are vets. You know? I, I, absolutely, man. I think that, I mean, really having service, and I mean, that's in our blood, and ha having two twins, and it was very expensive. We, we both went off to college, you know, running track, and then realized how expensive college was, went to the military, served, got that money, GI Bill, and it helped us get our degrees, came home, finished at Delaware State University, went back and got my master's at Delaware State. Now I'm also teaching at Delaware State in the social work department. So this, this is, again, just my life as far as 
being a part, using what's within you to bring forward social change and yeah. to advocate and, and to assist others in, in their empowerment process. No, shout out to the issue. No I'm doubt. Hornet, Hornets, 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 let's Hornets go. Forever, man. You're like, are we good now? I'm a part of the extended family. You no said doubt. A so, absolutely. Well, that's a, what it's absolutely. about. Um, um, so let's talk about your platform. Your mm -hmm. platform. Um, um, justice reform. Um, was it just, yeah, justice reform. Um, God knows we need that right now. A lot of people always are saying in Wilmington and Delaware that our system is broken. I think it's been broke since the beginning of time. No question. <laughs> in, indeed. I mean, many of the, the, the laws that, that impact our, our communities are, are just, you know, they're biased. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, many, um, again, young blacks and young, young brown males and, and females are in, ending up in, incarcerated a lot of times due to nonviolent offenses for, for lofty, lofty amounts of times yeah. of, of their lives. Yeah. And, and it, it makes no sense. It yeah. really makes no sense when we think about the true needs of our community and how much as a society we are, you know, needlessly wasting right. on, on incarceration when yeah. that money should really be dedicated to, to education, dedicated to community economic development, dedicated to, to if, give me one area, give me a quarter of what you spend on, on incarcerating just a quarter of the population and invest that just just a quarter into early childhood education yeah. and give me one year and let's let's see the outcome see let's see the change yeah. it's that type of, of of investment that that we need that that will change the, the criminal justice for us to begin to look at solutions and, and change because right now we're there there is no change yeah. we have no change in sight this is the way that this system works and it is based on you know the haves and the have nots and those who who are are vulnerable yeah. and, and those who need need protection they truly need uh, representatives they need elected officials who will st speak up for them and for these communities that that are distressed they need individuals that are going to, to fight to bring the resources to, to help them grow and develop yeah so when you were um when you're and you're absolutely right right with that when you decided to run for state rep yes sir what was that day like what was the thought like when you said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I, I had it a few different times, you know, again, as a, a professional social worker, the, the current state representative in, in I want to say, it's 2014 maybe, when we had the marriage equality mm -hmm. bill, and, and my, my opponent was one of the four Democrats who voted against it. Now, as a, as a professional social worker who strives to live according to the code of ethics of my profession mm -hmm. and, and valuing the, the, the human value of all people and, right. and respecting the, the dignity of all, for someone who represents me to take that stance. And it, it would be one thing if, if, you know, he didn't live three blocks behind me right, right. and that our community wasn't 25% Le gay and lesbian right. and for him to take that stance in, in, in our community it, it was a smack in the face to me and to our community and all the just the, the willingness and acceptance of our community how we all grow and, and work together right. and I, so I made it then and I, um, I, I just couldn't accept it and there's been a, a few different things that, that have happened that just it, it egged me on and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people say why you got in the race why did you get in the race so late and I, I was in a car accident maybe a couple months before um, the primary deadline. And I was really debating if, I mean, I, I'm, my car was totaled. I still have two um, tears in my meniscus. I have wow. surgery. So I was playing for surgery. Right. And I realized that, that if I get to surgery, I wouldn't be able to, to do the walking and every door knocking that was needed. So I put the surgery off and I decided to enter the race. Yeah. I decided to enter the race wow. because yeah. we... Iron Man out this month. Yeah, you know, yeah. just, just really, you know, you, you don't even think about it, man. You just, you just go. But right. I, I know our community deserves better. We, oh. we deserve someone who is, who is going to be respectful to everyone, who is going to serve with integrity and dignity and, and will fight to, to address the challenges that matter most to our, our, our city. When, when, when we have a representative city who's been silent on education, I mean, we, we haven't done anything. We, we've sent the WIAC down there. We fought like crazy in the city to get city support and county yeah. support. And then we send it to the, the, the legislator in Dover and it fails. Mm. That, that says a lot about 
our, our, our representative who was on the same weird committee with, with me and, and didn't do the job that was needed to, to, to get it, right. pull it out, one out of committee, but, but to really get, be heard and, and have the voice that were needed for us to succeed. Because yeah. this, is, again, is a, a state issue. Wilmington mm -hmm. didn't create this mess. It was created in the General Assembly. Yeah. So in order for us to, to fix that, we're going to need that type of, of assistance from the General Assembly. And it's going to take a strong voice, not just one going there trying to be you know, an island of one, but really going there and, and getting others to the point, your, your, your colleagues and yeah. other representatives and state senators to, to understand the, the impact that the education of, of Wilmington is having throughout the state. Yeah. And, and if they seen that, then there, there is no way that individuals would, would still think this is just a Wilmington problem because it isn't. Right, right. Where else do you and your, and your opponent, like, um, I don't want to say are you back and forth, but then you, you, you guys differ. You guys are different. I, it's, I mean, it's fundamental, man. I mean, I, I, I'm a community-based social worker, mm -hmm. and he isn't. Mm -hmm. And it, it's that simple. The, the community, the community is what what I move for. The community is right. what I thrive for. I, I strive for for balance, equity, and, and fairness, where we have certain institutions in our community that that he supports, and certain institutions in our community that he doesn't. Right. I mean that that how, I mean that's just on the basis of fairness. Right. That's that's not right. So if you, when you create that type of division and brokenness, it you you can't succeed, and and that's what what has been the the, the mo of of our our current leadership, yeah. where it, it's not based on 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 being just, not yeah. based on being fair, but really based on. A, almost intimidation, this type of, of, of leadership that is just, it, it's not one that, that produces success. Yeah. It, it's, it's meant to create chaos and, and, and division and oh, if they don't like it, oh well. That type of attitude, what, rather than let's build consensus and let's do what, what's best for every part of our district. Yeah. And, and we need leadership that is, that is truly going to speak to the issues that matter most and, and bring all of voices into this decision-making process, not, not exclude certain voices because this or, or, or because of that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Wow. You, you know, you're running a campaign that's like a firestorm right now. And a lot of people on the street are saying, some people are saying you're ready. Some people are saying you aren't ready. I believe, like, you've been on council for six years. You've seen a lot. You didn't just get up and say, you know what? I'm going to rock this first term out of city council, and then I'm going to run. You know, so like you said, you're, you're a person of the people. You know what, what goes on in the community. What do you have to say to those people that say, hey, he's not ready to run? Well, I don't know who is ready, you know, when, when you think about it. Right. I, I would, you know, I, I loved our, our beloved president, um, Brother Barack Obama. And, of course, everyone, you know, he jumped in and said, and the next thing you know, he was running for the highest office in the land. Yeah. That's what they said about him. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready right. And he's tell me he wasn't the best president this country has ever seen. Yeah, I, I, right now, boy, I, I, absolutely. So <laughs> tell me what are you defining ready as? Right. You know, you tell me what what area. You yeah. know, am I lacking as far as leadership, yeah. you know, as far as education, as far as my, my commitment to my community, mm -hmm. understanding the, the, the needs of rather at school, criminal justice, the, in the court system. I, I've dealt with every one of these these institutions personally mm -hmm. every day through, through my direct work right. in, in, in my profession. So I'm not speaking for, as an outsider, I'm speaking to someone who, who is personally engaged. And when, when I speak about education, I can speak about the schools that I'm in every day. Yeah. When I speak about the, the, the individuals who are incarcerated, I can speak about the individuals I, I, I visit, the individuals who I, I write letters for, who write letters back to me, and I, I can speak about the families that, that I sit with uh, of, of individuals who, who've been murdered, yeah. and I can speak about the children, the, the children who were on my own personal caseload who, who, who were murdered, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm there, and I, I'm reading their empty obituaries, and, and it says, you know, in his obituary that he was involved in one of my programs, and it's in his obituary, a 14-year-old, so you tell me about what does it mean to, to, to be ready? When, when is someone ready and what are you ready for? I'm yeah. ready to change these horrible conditions yeah. with, within my city. I'm ready to go to Dover and, and to be a, a voice, to be an advocate. And, and as, a, as a social worker, I, I, I don't know anyone who, who is more ready. You right. know, I, on, on as the basic level of social workers working with individuals and, and families to help you know, create plans and, and help them improve their life. And then the next level, you, you, you go to working with organizations and, mm -hmm. and, and communities. And the highest level of, of, of social workers advocating for and creating policies that, that impact those individuals. Yeah. That, that's what city council is. That's what social work is. This is my life. So it is, this is nothing new to me. Right. So you're saying that about being ready. Man, I, I've been ready for this my whole life. Yeah. You know, I, 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 honestly, I don't think that 
the the the, the General Assembly was ready. Right. But but they have no choice because Wilmington will, will no longer continue to, to just sit here and and, and just continue to allow these conditions within our city to go un, un, unaddressed. Yeah. You know, for our children to, to have the, 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 be the only children in the state who can't walk into a beautiful brand new school. Yeah. You, you travel outside the city, see all these beautiful schools mm -hmm. all the way down lower Delaware, mm -hmm. beautiful brand new schools. Mm -hmm. But our children have to go to these ancient buildings that, you know, then they're, they're, they're wasting so much of our, our tax dollars on just trying to heat and cool the building, more or less having resources to support the students' needs and support the classroom needs and the school needs. It's, 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 it's meant to fail. It's meant to fail, right. It, and, and as a social worker, what I, I think it, this is just for me right here. Like, what are some of the things that you actually see? Because it's I, I'm, I'm listening to you and watching you, right? And I can see the passion. I can feel the passion. But most of all, I can see the reason for change. And I and like, what are some of the things that you see uh, as a social worker that you know is just 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 wrong that no one is trying to fix? You know, you're not not no one's trying to fix that. They're being real lazy on, on fixing. I mean, there, there are countless issues. I mean, if, if you've ever taken the time and you read through the Delaware Code, you'll read something beautiful, you know, blah, 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 exception Wilmington. What? Everywhere throughout the code. Education, perfect example, annexation. We're the only city that's over 50,000, 50,000 residents. So we are the only city that can't annex, meaning... When they put the rule in place, they thought Wilmington would gobble up everyone else and we'd become this big monopoly and no yeah. one else would have a voice. So the, we're the only city that can't grow. Middletown has went from being the ninth biggest to the fourth biggest. They're growing, 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 growing their tax base. While the, meanwhile, Wilmington is landlocked. We can't grow. We can't grow. And there's a special thing in order for us to, to annex. We have to go through not only city approval, but county and then go to state. We're, if, if Middletown wants to grow, they just, you know, we agreement with the town next to us and we it's grow. Wrong. That's it. But we have this special exception and it hurts Wilmington. Last night we had a, a fundraiser at the, the new brew, brew, brew works in um, Wilmington Brew Works in, in the first district, which was a county space across from Haynes Park that we were able to annex since I've been on council to bring it into the city. And now we have a beautiful, thriving business there. And to me, that's a perfect example of how things that just weren't done and now they're, they're being done, things that weren't done for, for decades, right. 20 years or so in, in the middle of my district, in the heart of my district, we have the P.S. DuPont School yeah. and right next to it was the Burnett School, big tall school that they built. And, you know, it was built in this concept model, I want to say 72 around there. Mm -hmm. And it was this open concept. So the floors were all open and it was meant to have this open concept. That concept flew out the window and the school was never really reached its full use and capacity yeah. for any wine school district. So I sat there vacant for decades, being abused and people running there, taking every piece of metal you can imagine. Yeah. And for years, all of the elected officials who were down Dover and, and in Wilmington said, we need to do something about this school. We need to do this, do that. And I was awake, Mr. Johnson, who lives right across the street, called me one night, it was like four o'clock in the morning. Individuals were actually in the school, throwing metal out of the window. Woke him up, we called the police, they got caught. And then we have a civic meeting the next week and we said, um, what are we gonna do? So I created a petition, we circulated, got over 550 signatures. And we sat down, instead of pointing fingers at the district, we sat down with the district and said, you know, how can we remedy this? We worked with the district, ended up getting a certificate of necessity. The EPA came in, walked through the building. I was on the tour with them. It looked like a war zone mm -hmm. inside of that building. And, and we were granted the certificate of necessity and given the funds through a bond issue to, not, to knock the building down. And now we have new green space and, and fields coming for our community and for our, our ideal middle school mm -hmm. in, in our district. So brother, we, we, we downtown Wilmington. It's growing. Um, yes, what, what are your thoughts? What do you what do you what do you see when you when you walk Wilmington now? I, I see the potential. Mm -hmm. I see, as I always, see I see the, the, the challenges and opportunities. I see the challenges for many of our communities, some in which you, that haven't been touched in years as far as development, mm -hmm. and I see the opportunities for investment in those communities. Mm -hmm. I see how we, we've taken a, a barren riverfront and over the past 20, 25 years, turning into a thriving section of our city. And I, I think that's a, a great example because many of our communities are just as barren 
they are, 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 are hurting and, and begging for attention. And we have in, in, in the first district, all the way from the Brandywine River, you know, you can take it all the way down Market Street. And when I was the Neighborhood Planning Council president, we had a what we call a business improvement plan, just mm -hmm. like we have downtown. We had our own for our neighborhood saying, we want development and resources to support our businesses, our business corridor mm -hmm. from the Brandywine River all the way to, to Foreman Mills. That was the city's line. But now going at, at state rep, we're saying all the way up Philadelphia Pike. Yeah. And, and those same businesses need support. Wow. They need ec economic development. We need attention and focus is to, to housing initiatives and for, for supports for individuals who are dealing with um, the lack of opportunities as far as job placement and, and, and skills to skills training where, where you receive not just a skill and a certificate, yeah. but you, you receive a, a true pathway to, to, to employment mm -hmm. and to, to bring jobs into our, our, our community. You look at it's small businesses that are going to turn communities like that around. When you have shops up and down Market Street where people can invest and spend their money in their own community and these, these little small shops can hire from the community, that's the change. Yeah. That, that's the change. So that's what we need that's what you see in certain sections where we're where we're thriving and in those who, who were we're hurting is because we need that same type of, of support that same type of investment and I, I, I'm happy at, at the progress when you see our, our city grow mm -hmm. but you're, you're sad as well because you know that at this rate we'll never get to where we need to go as far as having all communities being able to, to ha be happy and, and safe and, and, and be places where, where children can, can go to a beautiful play, play, playground without you know, a, a young lady. This was maybe in, in February. Uh, a young man was at, at 30th Street Park Park. I grew up and spent at least a quarter of my life in that playground mm -hmm. and, and hasn't been touched and maybe once they Home Depot when they came to our city they did a playground makeover. Other than that, the playground hasn't been touched. I mean, the basketball courts nothing has been touched since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And this little kid got cut on on a piece of rusty um, park equipment. And it's that type of um, things that that shouldn't happen. We have to invest, you know, around our city and do it in a way where where everyone is able to to benefit from mm -hmm. from our, our growth and our development and. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's tough because you have limited resources, limited supports, but you have to begin to go to those, those areas of, of need yeah. and to address that, those immediate concerns. Mm -hmm. That's what we, we haven't done so well as a city and as a state. I don't see any limits, limited resources outside of Wilmington. Like, you know, everywhere you go, like you said, you know, you go, you go down um, Dover, there are new schools. You go down Middletown, there are new schools, new books. You know, um, when I go to the, the in some of these schools here, I see some of the archaic ways and archaic things that they have of teaching. You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I was in a, I was at a friend's school, and they had a whole like truckload of Mac computers, and that alone is is, is teaching kids different skills. Absolutely. Well, our kids have old. <laughs> I want to say Macintosh, not Macintosh, old old box computers, and yeah. things are outdated. So. You know, and with that being said, our workforce is becoming outdated. How do you how do you think that we need to retool humans to human beings here in Delaware so and retrain them so they can get these jobs that everyone is talking about that's that's here? It it, it takes a, a true commitment from not only our, our city, our county, our state, but also from our educational institutions, our partners from Dell Tech, Dell State, and, and University of Delaware, Widener, yeah. Springfield, all of our educational institutions for them to, to, to work together, mm -hmm. to work at, at the state level, county and city level, to, to say this, these are the areas of, of growth and development. How can we work with our high schools, work with our, our junior high schools? William Penn actually has Colonial School District. They have a Pathways program where children who are now in seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. start thinking about careers. And by the right. time they get to high school, now they're in those career fields right. and their, their tracks. We need to do the same thing in, in our school. Sadly, you know, you, you think of that's, that's a, 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 when you say suburban school, but it's outside. They serve some of our children, but yeah. some, for, for the majority of our, our children, we, we're, we don't have those same exposure to, to programs. So we need those type of programs, not only based inside of the schools, but we also need to, profit, to partner with our nonprofit partners yeah. and begin to bring those into our, our, our city. Yeah. We need those type of apprentice programs so, so that young men and young ladies can, can join 
true working trades, become carpenters and, yeah. and, and welders and have careers with, with sustainable wages where they, they can change their lives and change their, their communities. Yeah. My, my brother and I were not that college is the answer for everyone, but we were the first in, in our families to go off to, to, to college. My, yeah. my grandfather was a, a, a brick mason who, who worked his whole life, worked himself basically to, to death. Would get up six o'clock in the morning and, and work, work, work. And he right. had a sixth grade education and provided for his family, brought a house and, and everything. And we were the first ones to go off to college. And then you see just since our generation how things have changed in our own family. So education is important. It's, it's a good hallmark. It gives you that, that foundation to, to build upon. Right. And, and, we need that same type of educational opportunities for, for all of our children. But yeah. when our children are in, in high school and they're reading on, on the third or fourth grade level, college, you know, it, it's, it's, it's tough for me to think that in, in my heart that I'm ready for college. Yeah. When, when I know that these are my true skills, when I know that these are the deficits I have, yeah. I have no fault to my own. This is, this is what the school system ha has provided me. Yeah. And those are, are, are the challenges that we face. And, and I can't say the word investment enough because that's what it's going to take to truly begin to, to show not only the, this city, but to show our, our district and to show our children mm -hmm. the, the, the potential for tomorrow to, yeah. to be better, just to have be a place in which Delaware can, can truly be a place where they, they, they feel they belong. Yeah. They feel they belong and, and, and that they feel respected and, and that their city loves them as, as, as much as they love it. Yeah, one of the things is, um, Kids in, in, in the street, they, they love music, they love entertainment, they love all that. I know my first my first time hearing about you was Deaf Comedy Jam, right? Poetry. Po Deaf Poetry, yeah, Deaf Poetry. Um, and I said Deaf Comedy, <laughs> Deaf Poetry. And um, you were you were actually on stage somewhere in Wilmington and someone came up to me and they was like, yo, I really like that brother right there. And I'm like, you know, what's, what happened? He's like, that brother changed my life. Now, um, um, she was telling me how you and your brother were the reason that they became became spoken artists, spoken word artists. But most of all, how they started focusing on their education. And now that this person, I'm not gonna say her name, this person is in like Thailand now running doing IT, you know, but her whole homage is you know, you know not brother Nomini, he helped me out. And I can see from way back when you were doing when you and your brother were doing your thing on TV that that community piece, that that love piece for not just African American people, but for people, humanity was, has always been there, and it's and it's still there. And and after today's conversation, I'm saying now, like, wow, like, yeah, we do need that change that you're talking about, that education. Everyone needs to play on the same field that um, that you're you're speaking about. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say to to people out there that need to know a little bit more about you? I'll just say, I guess, and just in closing, a point that you just mentioned about the the role of, of artists. You know, as, as, as an artist, I've always felt that it's our, our, our job, you know, to speak of, to bring up the, the difficult conversations, to make people uncomfortable, you know, so they can begin to, to address these challenges. No, no one, you know, I used to tell a story of, you know, our, our poetry. My, my brother loves fish. He eats fish every day. And one day we were walking, we were in Harlem, New York, walking up Morningside Avenue, and you know, like the, the big fish shops that they have on, on television. Mm -hmm. And it is this big old fish, right? And he's like, yo, look at that fish. And I'm thinking, man, last day I want to look at is, is a, a fish on this hot day, you know what I mean? But, but I turned, I turned, and I, I looked at, at the fish. And when I looked at it, all, all it, the scales basically made it like this big old beautiful rainbow, man. Mm -hmm. And that's all I seen was the rainbow. And right. it was just like, whoa, you know? But I often felt that that was our poetry. Our poetry helps turn this, this story, this sad dead fish into a beautiful rainbow so that we all can sit and look at it and see the beauty, beauty and see the challenges, see the hopes, the opportunities, see the, the role that we play mm -hmm. in helping our community and the role that we play in, in hurting our community. And, and as an artist, I feel that we, we need that. We, we need someone that, that is going to, to speak up. And that as to all the artists in, in our city, you know, be proud of your voice, be proud of, of your art because it's art that, that transforms not only individuals, but, but communities. Yeah. And, and, and we touch lives every single day. Mm -hmm. And your art, you never know what, what, what it says. So many individuals who have, have said, you know, over the years, I mean, you, you came to my school when I was in third or fourth grade, and you yeah. said this, you said that. And these is college, college graduates yeah. coming, you know, I'm thinking, we've been doing this that long. <laughs> How do I feel when, you, when they come up to you and, and they be like, 
brother, you influenced me. You, you know. no, no question, man. I mean, I know we've been doing this forever. So, I mean, I, I have children currently on my caseload who are the grandchildren of, of, of parents that I work with. Yeah. I mean, seriously. That, so I, I know we've been doing it a long time. We've been making a difference and, and have shown true investment in, in our community, not only through our, our, our art, but also through our social work. And, yeah. and th that's, that's how you, you, you build change, by, yeah. by being consistent. You yeah. know, if there's anything I am, you know, as I said earlier, if you love me today, you're gonna love me tomorrow. I, I'm consistent. <laughs> this, this is who I am, and uh, this, this is what matters. The, yeah. the issues that matter are, are what you will find in my poetry, or what you will find me fighting for on city council, what you find, find me as a community-based social worker for, fighting in our schools, yeah. in, in our communities a, a, every single day. It's not in the bloodline. It is the bloodline. It, 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 this, this is life. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what other people do right. and think about a campaign. This is my life every day. My life is, is, it's more of it, but this is what I do every day. Yeah. Now and I just have the opportunity to talk to more people about what, what I do running a campaign. That's the only thing that, that has changed. Mm -hmm. And besides that, it, it's, it's work a, as usual. And yeah. I think that once we, we get to Dover, it's gonna be that same type of, of continuing that work mm -hmm. and, and having individuals who, who may know me and, and as the poet laureate, but seeing me as a, a true community-based social worker, as an advocate, as a fighter for, for, for my city, for my district, mm -hmm. and someone who is you know, just as unyielding in, in, in my stance as I am willing to understand that in order to move forward, we have to, to work together. And, and if yeah. I'm only focused on one issue and you're focused on one issue, we're, we're not going anywhere. Right. But I think the one issue that everyone in this state can agree upon is that Wilmington is, the, is not only just the, the economic engine of our state, we are the heart of yeah. the state of Delaware. I mean, the true heart. And when, when people think about the challenges and think about Wilmington, whether it's a business wanting to move here or, or an elderly person or, or a recent retiree wanting to move down to, to Rehoboth, they, they, they hear about Delaware, they hear yeah. about Wilmington, and, and we can change that. Yeah. We can make Wilmington be what, what it should be, yeah. you know, that, what, how I feel in my heart about Wilmington, I want everyone to feel that same way, nice. that, that there, there's no other place that, as beautiful. Yeah. And, and when, when you feel that way, it, it's, it's not hard to make other people feel that way when, it, when not only do they hear it in your words, but they see it in your actions. Yeah, nice. And that's a perfect segue because you know what, um, I think you should just like close out with a, with a little piece. I'm just a little poetry piece, you know what I'm saying? Like, you go then I'm Infected with the inner city disease is doubtful I'll see tomorrow. Sleeping with my sorrows, I wake up with my mind unraveling, traveling at the speed of thought. Try to run away from my life, but I wasn't fast enough. My past keeps catching up. I keep messing up on life exams. Every question is multiple choice, but man, they so confusing. The devil like, look boy, just choose one. God says, be patient, son. Ain't no retest today. Too much stress, so I take recess. Go to my old elementary school and I watch the children play. But their smiles make me feel a certain way. I grieve, can barely breathe as I watch them run because my younger brother never made it to 21. Instead of tasting death, I wish he never left my mama's breast. Stress builds in me and I wonder why is the devil acting so friendly. Got me my own worst enemy. They say the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. But so often it's my own feet that impede the path of my progress. And I guess it's easy to see what we victims to the devil's inner city illusion, the devil's confusion. He got inner city slaves believing they being paid. See, the devil will sell you anything that you big or bold enough to ask for. And the price is your life. But you won't believe that you've been deceived until you've been diagnosed with that inner city disease. Nice. It's your main man, Big Ivy, talking to town, brother Nami. Thank you so much for, for, yes, for joining me. I appreciate I that. Good luck on your campaign, good appreciate brother. Um, if there's any more information that you want to know about, brother Nami, give me your, your info. The, the website is anomdi, that's N N A M D I dash D E, anomdi dash D E dot com. And the phone number is 302 729 Make sure you get out and vote September 6th. Um, and then and, and just stay connected to the, the candidates. Learn more about the candidates. Any question that you have for Brother Nandi, please hit him up. He, he'll, he'll respond. He definitely will. All right, this is your main man, Big Ivy, talking to this for DETVCH.com. The only network in Delaware that's giving you positive news, positive stories, and just a positive the new world.